Antiarrhythmic agents In this video, we'll discuss the mechanism of tachyarrhythmias. So that we can understand how antiarrhythmic agents work. There are two major mechanisms for tachyarrhythmias. The first is disorders of impulse formation. In this tachyarrhythmias can be produced by enhanced automaticity of sinoatrial node. Second is, ectopic automaticity or pacemaker activity from atrial, ventricular or Purkinje cells. The last mechanism of abnormal impulse formation is triggered activity, which can be early after depolarization, or delayed after depolarization. The second major mechanism of tachyarrhythmia is disorders of impulse conduction. It could be a re-entry mechanism, also called circus movement. It can occur at ventricular muscle Purkinje fiber junction. Or at AV nodal pathway. The second disorder of impulse conduction is the presence of accessory conduction pathway such as in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Let's see the each mechanism in detail. Acceleration of SA nodal discharge is caused by increase in the phase 4 depolarization slope. Thus it causes sinus tachycardia. Enhanced automaticity of SA node can be caused by beta-1 receptor stimulation, hyperkalemia, acidosis, and fiber stretch. Ectopic pacemaker activity from atrial, ventricular or Purkinje fibers can occur when resting membrane potential becomes less negative, when phase 4 slope increases, when the threshold potential for depolarization becomes more negative. Above mechanisms can occur in hyperkalemia, myocardial or Purkinje fiber stretch. And following myocardial ischemia, where injury currents of ischemic myocardium can depolarize adjacent non ischemic myocardium, leading to ventricular tachycardia. Whenever the discharge rate of an ectopic pacemaker is more than the normal sinus rate, ectopic automaticity will be expressed in the form of atrial, ventricular tachycardia and accelerated idioventricular rhythms. After depolarizations are membrane voltage oscillations. If after depolarizations are of adequate magnitude, it can trigger premature action potentials. After depolarization occurring in phase 2 or 3 is called early after depolarization. It is due to reactivation of L-type calcium channels. It is associated with increased repolarization time as seen in long QT syndrome. It can cause premature ventricular contractions and polymorphic VT. Delayed after depolarization occurs during phase 4. It is due to intracellular calcium overload. This can be caused by digoxin toxicity, high catecholamine levels, and re-perfusion injury. Delayed after depolarization can cause premature ventricular contractions and ventricular tachycardia. Before proceeding to re-entry mechanism, it is important to know about the effective refractory period of cardiomyocytes. During the effective or the absolute refractory period, the cardiac myocyte cannot be excited, whereas in the relative refractory period minimal excitation can occur. Let's see about re-entry, a mechanism responsible for most of the tachyarrhythmias. In normal myocardium, the Purkinje fibers divide into the ventricular wall. The impulse from the Purkinje fibers excite the myocardium, and the impulses collide and extinguish each other. But when a myocardial infarction occurs, the conduction in the damaged pathway is too slow to propagate. Thus it leads to unidirectional conduction block. Meanwhile, the conduction along the normal myocardium excites a larger region. This large electrical stimulus is strong enough to slowly conduct along the ischemic myocardium in a retrograde fashion. This retrograde impulse can trigger normal myocardium. If it had recovered from the effective refractory period, this re-entrant circuit can function as an ectopic ventricular pacemaker. If a normal sinus impulse invade a portion of the loop, the re-entrant circuit breaks causing only premature ventricular contraction or a short run of ventricular tachycardia. If the re-entrant circuit is rapid enough it can cause sustained ventricular tachycardia. A V node has parallel pathways having different conduction rates. The fast conduction pathway has a long refractory period. 
and the slow pathway has a shorter refractory period. In normal sinus rhythm, the impulse along the fast pathway enters the bundle of his. And the impulse along the slow pathway becomes blocked near the bundle of his. As it hits the fast pathway when it is in the refractory period. When a precisely timed premature atrial beat impulse reaches the AV node. The impulse along the fast pathway is blocked as it is still in the refractory period of the previous impulse. But the impulse travels along the slow pathway as it has a shorter refractory period and recovered. By the time the impulse along the slow pathway reaches the bundle of his. The fast pathway would have been recovered from the refractory period. Thus the retrograde conduction occurs along the fast pathway back to the atrium. And a re-entrant circuit is established, giving rise to AV nodal re-entrant tachycardia. It is a type of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. In a normal person, the impulse from the SA node travels to AV node, then to the bundle of his and excites the ventricle via Purkinje fibers. In case of the accessory pathway, the impulse from the ventricles travels to the atria causing them to contract before the SA nodal impulse arrives. Thus it creates a loop of circuit causing tachyarrhythmia. Let's see about the classification and mechanism of action of antiarrhythmic agents in the next video.